Hi, and welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen my show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do elder law. I'm in a large firm called Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us all doing special things, and this is what I do. Um, uh, what I, when I started this show, it was to try to supplement the work that I try to do as an educational matter, doing uh, presentations at the Tisbury Council on Aging and in other places, so that really to help you as seniors and folks who are dealing with seniors know the players that you need to know, the people here on the island who are dealing with senior matters all the time. And that's Victoria Hazelbarth. So thank you very much for coming onto the show. It's a pleasure to be here, I, Art. I, I really appreciate it. I know that we had met a couple of times mm -hmm. before. Yes. And I asked you to come on to talk about a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. But first, just to tell me about you. Well, tell us, how, how did you get here? Is Hazelbarth, as I mentioned to you, that's like a Dutch name. Maybe she came from, it, maybe they were from the here. Yes, my original ancestors are from Holland. Yeah. And that was very astute of you to pick yeah. that up. Most people think it's um, a, German a German name. But my ancestors were located near the border of Germany, where there yeah. was a strong Germanic infusion. Fusion yeah. over the years. But you weren't, but the family wasn't an old Martha's Vineyard 300 years ago family. No, Not but my dad's Nothing. family had a summer cottage in Cottage City. So oh. he spent his summers here growing up and he was stationed in the Navy here. And then he met my mother and immediately wanted to share the vineyard's beauty with her. Yeah. So yeah. I grew up coming here and spending... Now, did, you go, did you go to Cottage City or were you someplace else on the island when you came to the summer? Well, my dad's family sadly sold their campground cottage. It's uh, something I would love to have today. Yeah. Um, but we would stay at you know, different local venues, different yeah. hotels, and, yeah. and sample different restaurants. And we've seen a lot of uh, changes on the vineyard over the years. But it's a place I really quickly fell in love with from childhood. And I'm so happy that I can really make a difference in what I'm doing today within the island community. Because you've been here a long time now. You've mm -hmm. been actually here full time. For 30 some odd years. 30 some odd yeah. years. And, and, and you've been working actually in, in, in for the town for, mm -hmm. for many for, of those years. For several years right. now. And uh, currently I'm the outreach worker mm -hmm. uh, at the Edgar Town Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. And, and um, tell me what that means. Uh, and tell me kind well, of your sense of kind of what the Council on Aging's role is now mm -hmm. in the community and what the outreach worker does. Well, part of um, uh, the COA's mission mm -hmm. is to promote vital aging yeah. by um, promoting vital, in age. That's vital aging, yeah. you know, promoting yeah. within the aging population. And yeah. generally, we, we um, I encourage people 55 and over to mm -hmm. really participate in our programs, although we welcome people of all ages. Um, we help foster independence, uh, growth, uh, good health, and vitality. So in a sense, we're um, a good uh, human resources branch of the town. And, and, and you do a lot of those kinds of activities, so there are uh, those kinds of, right at the Council on Aging, right at the Senior Center? Yes, but my job, I yeah. do, um, mine is a strong outreach component. I see. Um, and currently I'm managing 64 cases in town, cases yeah. that uh, many, many of which have been referrals from mm -hmm. community members. Mm -hmm. Occasionally someone in the community will give me a ring and say, Victoria, you know, I spotted uh, a senior at the grocery store I'm very yeah. concerned about. They appeared confused. Yeah. So I will, uh, based on that referral, yeah. I will try to identify who that senior is and yeah. contact that senior directly. And uh, if I can't contact the senior, uh, use the local police force as a resource, or yeah. perhaps get in touch with a relative of that senior and try to connect that senior with services that will help them age in place and rather, and I, and rather and than end up in institutional care, just prolong yeah. their vitality in the community. Uh -huh. And if they didn't have those additional services, if they didn't have the watchful eyes looking after them, Right. then they'd be in a much more dangerous place, let's say. And I suppose, and one of the reasons I wanted you on is I think mm -hmm. for, for so, and so often, even in, in Martha's Vineyard, a small place, or in Edgartown, a small town, mm -hmm. you've got seniors who wouldn't necessarily know you or the family, and, the, and so you'd be doing the outreach and people would be saying, so what, what do they want? You know, why mm -hmm. are they there? So to know that there's actually somebody who is there to help you out, mm -hmm or to provide services that they, they may not even be aware of, but you ha that happens a lot, that people are simply not even aware 
of the services that you have. Right. right? Well, we're we're um, an information and referral service, yeah. the outreach department. Yeah. So people, uh, families, and residents, and young and old alike are calling us regularly throughout the week, asking questions. N now, you do know, you actually go to people's homes? On I do. Team? I do. I do uh, outreach visits. Yeah. Um, and I, I try to build that into my weekly r routine. I have yeah. a few hospice patients that I like to visit, seniors in our community, many of whom have lived their whole lives in Edgartown, who are at the end stages of their lives, yeah. and I try to offer them support and their family support. Because, of course, they want to be at home. Right. Everybody wants to be at home, especially, especially when you're trying to face the fears surrounding death mm -hmm. you know where else would you want to be doing that than in a very familiar place you know so right. I'm, I'm sure that those people really appreciate mm -hmm. that and regarding home visits yeah. um, I also do home assessments mm -hmm. regarding the individual that um, someone may have seen in the grocery store who was confused mm -hmm. I might call that individual tell them I'm from the Council on Aging offer to bring them some information about our services yeah. we have a wonderful chef on board where we work who makes these homemade soups I might bring up a, a cup of soup over and meet that senior and sort of assess the home situation look around mm -hmm. see what I can do to help make that senior safer and help give that senior a better quality of life so you, you had and that's it sounds like your job is really fascinating, mm -hmm. but you told me that you're also, you've also been involved with quite a few people on Martha's Vineyard mm -hmm. in something called the Healthy Aging Task yes. Force, which, which seems to have kind of followed from the acknowledgement of a lot of folks that there are some island-wide issues with aging that need to be dealt with mm -hmm. in the future. Can you just talk about that? And I know I had yeah. Patty Moore at the, on, on at the last show mm -hmm. to talk about this in general. Mm -hmm. Can you give me your sense or your perspective on that and why it's valuable and where it's going? Sure, you know, and Patty, um, you know, may have mentioned that Dukes County is the fastest growing, uh, fastest growing county in the state, especially mm -hmm. as it relates to seniors. Uh, between 2000 and 2010, our senior population doubled. Wow. That's and that's staggering. And that's, that's, and staggering. that's just moving forward. That's yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Um, it's projected to increase by leaps and bounds, you know, in the next 20 years, 26% of um, the individuals who live on Martha's Vineyard mm -hmm. are over the, the age of 65 currently. Which must be one and of the highest percentages in the state. It is. Time. It yeah. is. And in the next few years, that's going to increase to 32%. And the frightening thing is that we don't have the resources needed to help these individuals age comfortably. And I suppose... When you, when you start thinking about that that cluster of resources, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different pieces to that. Mm -hmm. And can, can you just give us a, just a, just a snapshot of the areas that the Healthy Aging Task Force has been dealing with, and then as you know, I want to talk about a specific mm -hmm. one, which was of real well, interest. Yeah, yeah, the um, the Healthy Aging Task Force um, oversees quite mm -hmm. a few subcommittees, mm -hmm. and each subcommittee is working on a particular issue that affects seniors. Mm -hmm. There's um, a subcommittee that deals with housing. Uh, there's a subcommittee that deals with transportation. Uh, there's a subcommittee that deals with helping seniors age comfortably in place. There's a committee that is um, uh, uh, making great strides in uh, setting up a um, a website mm -hmm. that will be a virtual tool for families and individuals who are aging to be able to investigate the resources that we have here available to them. We're about ready to launch that in the coming couple of months. I was just going to say that's what that's. I, I remember uh, at my last seminar in Tisbury. Mm -hmm. Quite a few folks. I said so. Congratulations, because it was right after the town meeting, the last town meeting, the Aquinnah town meeting, mm -hmm. where everybody had endorsed this uh, as as something that that folks really understood was crucial to the island mm -hmm. and crucial kind of to the future of the island right mm -hmm. so that's those are those are ex that's exciting now you mentioned to me that in and then one of those in the in the housing task force right was it in the housing task force or one of the others well that there's a subcommittee that's dealing specifically with this issue of providing a very special environment for those folks who actually can't be at home. They just can't be safely at home and therefore need to be in an environment where there is kind of the more kind of ongoing care. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Healthy Aging in the Community Task Force yeah. um, identified a wonderful housing model 
mm -hmm. called the greenhouse model, which was conceived of, I'm going to say, back in the 70s by yeah. a Dr. Bill Thomas, yeah. who was a pioneer. Must have been the 70s, right? Those it were, was the 70s. Those halcyon days. You know? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and he was a pioneer in, in, um, in, and a visionary in seeing what was to come and how our senior population was going to explode and how we can um, better tailor the institutional care that was present to yep. something more user-friendly, let's right. say. And so and what, and what we're talking about, I want to be clear with you, what mm -hmm. we're talking about is a nursing home mm -hmm. that you wouldn't mind being in. That's right. That is, and to my, as I always tell people, you know, my clients basically are either people who are worried about Alzheimer's or people who have Alzheimer's or people who know someone who have mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. That's probably the biggest worry. And to a person, everyone's goal in life is to never go to a nursing mm -hmm. home. And I've been to a lot of nursing homes and I get it, right? I, have, I had not found, you know, a really, as much as folks try, mm -hmm. right? I have not found a place that I would say to myself, oh, I wouldn't mind being here, right? So tell us about the greenhouse. Well, the greenhouse, again, it was um, conceived of by Dr. Bill Thomas yeah. many years ago. And yeah. it's finally, after all these years, gained a following in the United States. And they're cropping up all over. Mm -hmm. And they're an evidence-based model. Mm -hmm. So the greenhouse, a lot of people question that name because they think of... Sounds a, like an environmental group. I, I, an environmental yeah. group or a place where you grow healthy house plants. Yeah. Well, this is a place where we grow healthy seniors. And it's um, the greenhouse is a residential equivalent of a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And its facade is in keeping with the neighborhood. It's beautifully architecturally detailed. Yeah. It has a lovely uh, landscape architecture to it. It. So you really wouldn't be able to distinguish it from any other lovely upper scale home. So in it, other words, it's something that's really designed to fit into a neighborhood yes, also. Yes, and it accommodates between 10 to 12 seniors. But that's th what's special. It is, it I is. I mean, there are many things that are special, but to start with the premise mm -hmm. that there are only 10 to 12 seniors there versus where this ho the whole nursing home business has gone, it seems, over the last 20 or 30 years, which is mainly because of for-profit driven toward these larger and larger institutions. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of where things have gone, which is quite, that's quite something. Right. It's, it's a lovely home-like setting, yeah. which... And so tell me, and tell me it, how does that home work? Well, you describe the outside so that the neighbors are happy that they're there, right? Mm -hmm. Can you describe how it, how it works? One of the most wonderful things about it is when you step through the front door, mm -hmm. uh, you would assume to see uh, different Hoyer lifts and yeah. medicine mm -hmm. carts and pieces of medical equipment that typify the institutional environment. Right. Well, in the greenhouse model, those things, while they exist in minimal form, they're all architecturally designed into the walls, into the ceilings, tucked into cabinets. So yeah. upon stepping into a greenhouse model, you think you're stepping into someone's home. The center of the greenhouse is it's often a round kiosk-like kitchen yeah. with low counter space for, for individuals to be able to roll a wheelchair up to, to yeah. participate in meal making, and a more elevated counter space yeah. for the Shabazim which is a Turkish word meaning king's falcons yeah. and the term that is given to the wonderful group of people who are instrumental in the seniors care mm -hmm. and the Shabazim um, are trained not only in to be CNAs but CNAs in means certified nursing assistant okay. But they're also trained in the culinary arts yeah. they're trained in um, different therapies and have a broader range of knowledge than your typical CNA would have. And that a typical CNA is, is the person who serves or does the grunt work right. at our conven conventional nursing home. I was going to say, so if you go into a conventional nursing home and you're kind of walking in and you're going to mm -hmm. a wing, right, of the conventional, the people that you're seeing moving around and helping people are typically CNAs. That's that correct. Right? Okay. So, it, so you're really taking what has been kind of an isolated role that, that folks have played in a nursing home, mm -hmm. and you're really kind of asking these people to really broaden themselves yes. and to do a whole lot of things. Yes, and one of the things that the greenhouse model does mm -hmm. is provide CNAs with additional hours of training. I can't remember exactly, approximately 500 additional hours mm -hmm. to be trained in, in 
other things that can actually make this a financially viable model because a lot of the expenditures in a conventional nursing home go toward cooking and cleaning and laundry and all of those right. services that are behind the scenes that you and right. I might not typically see but right. they add up to a, a, a huge a hunk of change. Number. Right, And in um, a big nursing home, each one of those mm -hmm. functions ends up having to be done, as you suggested, by these, spe these specialized groups. So mm -hmm. you had CNAs doing kind of running around, and you got cooks and dishwashers and stuff doing that, and you've got, so everybody's got like a little piece. Mm -hmm. So you're really describing people who are kind of multi-faceted folks yes. doing these kinds of, these kinds of things. Yes, and they're all, they receive the specialized training, and yeah. they do it all. And one of the things in doing it all is to elevate the senior to be the star of the show. The greenhouse doesn't have the typical hierarchy of a conventional nursing home, mm -hmm. you know, starting with the CEO and the different administrative levels below it, right. and then the nursing staff and the different layers of that. Yeah. Um, it is a self-governed care tr team. And, yeah. and, and it's been highly effective and it's strongly evidence-based. That and this when you, when is the way evidence-based. Evidence evidence the greenhouse model has been around for a while, mm -hmm. and it has met with rave reviews, so five-star rating. So this is isn't just a product of the '70s that kind of. Correct. These aren't all our flower children that are doing these. Correct. These, right, right. And one of the things to give you um, an example of something that's yeah. evidence-based greenhouse models. Uh, one of the things they can do is provide short-term rehabilitative care. Mm -hmm. In a conventional nursing setting, it takes approximately 28 days for a senior to recover from a serious procedure. Mm -hmm. That's the average, the national average. Mm -hmm. In a greenhouse model, because of the structure of the model and the care, the intimate care they receive, that's been cut down to 17 days as the average. That's, that's monumental. That's a huge money that's saver huge. in and of itself. That's huge. So that actually gets me to kind of another question when mm -hmm. you're talking about the greenhouse. So who would be there? Like, well, oftentimes when I, when, I go to a, when I go to a nursing home, so there were kind of a variety of different sets of people who were there, sometimes on different wings. So mm -hmm. often, and oftentimes there'll be what I'll call a rehab wing. So mm -hmm. people who are coming from the hospital and they're doing physical therapy and occupational therapy and such stuff. And it is imagined they're only gonna be there for a little while. And then often there'll be the dementia wing, right? Mm -hmm. or, the, or the Alzheimer's wing, or the long-term care wing, primarily it seems to me as an outsider, composed of folks who have, may have some physical needs, mm -hmm. but really who have dementia, mm -hmm. right? And they're there primarily for that. So in the greenhouse, in the smaller group, are, uh, is this, this for a variety of different kinds of folks? Is it primarily for folks with dementia? Can you just talk about that? Who would, who would you expect would go? That's a good question. Yeah. We have to decide that. Our community has to decide what we need in order to move forward to develop these small little units because yeah. a greenhouse only accommodates 10 to 12 people. So we have a choice. You know, obviously in such a small unit, we can't have multiple wings that, right. you know, uh, treat different situations. Right. So we can have, um, they, we can have a skilled nursing yeah. uh, greenhouse model. Yeah. We can have a dementia care greenhouse model and the statistics are proving that I that's see. what we're most in need of right now because there's a waiting list for uh, uh, that type of care at Windermere. Right. Um, there can be uh, an MS unit. There can be uh, uh, a greenhouse for people with Parkinson's. There can be rehab greenhouses, short-term care, yeah. quick turnaround. Yeah. So we can take mm -hmm. that small greenhouse model and make it into whatever we want it to be based on community input and based on, uh, on need. And when you describe that, 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 that is suggesting also mm -hmm that there are really kind of a whole bunch of little greenhouses, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that, they, are, and that they are, instead of the, there being kind of an island-wide, here's where you go when mm -hmm. you're going to the nursing home, that there end up being this distributed set of places who are, that are kind of more, I want to, for want of a better term, neighborhood friendly. Yes. Um, in which you're going, to be, you're going to be experiencing these different kinds of things. That's, a, that's really a fascinating, mm -hmm. and, and I guess what's, what's so fascinating to me about that is that given the nature of the island, right, that you do have six different communities, but everybody's on the island and everybody 
What I love about it here is everybody gets the fact that we're kind of all in this together because, you know, the last thing you want to do is have to go off island. The notion of that you could actually do this, kind of figure out a way to distribute these things like across the island. Yes. That's, a, that's really fascinating. And it's important to get the towns on board. I, I know uh, the town of Edgartown yeah. has, uh, is considering and moving forward with the development of a um, mixed-use lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've approached Edgartown and, and presented the greenhouse model. And um, we're hoping that perhaps they'll consider incorporating that yeah. in their residential mixed-use development. Oh, what an interesting notion. Yeah. What an interest now, w as you describe this, mm -hmm. I'm saying to myself, now, now this is the business person in me saying, so I, 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 I would assume, or I know, that, the, that what had been driving these institutions towards greater and greater size was simply in terms of nursing homes was economies of scale. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is going in the opposite direction to a very small structure, mm -hmm. right? Now, in, but you're telling me that these, as an economic matter, have worked, right? They do. And who who p is, if, well, first of all, if I were if w in one of these, would mass, if I were, and I had dementia, mm -hmm. right, and I were otherwise eligible for nursing home care, right, would mass health pay for me to, to be there if I were otherwise eligible for mass health? It, w it would, and we're mm -hmm. hoping to, um, uh, have a combination perhaps of private pay and yeah. mass health yeah. to make it a little more economically viable. Yeah. But one of the keys and one of the most important things to always remember with the greenhouse model is it's a home for life. And right. other institutions, when someone spends down their assets, are oftentimes given one month's notice to vacate. Your assets have been spent down. You can yes. no longer afford to live here. We're not taking any more. Medicaid uh, clients, so therefore you're going to have to find another place to live. Right, and how it, yep. horrific for someone, you know, who's been a hard worker their entire life, raising families and participating in society to at 80 or 90 years old, be out with their suitcase in the street. It's everybody's worst fear. It everybody's is. worst fear because they know that mass health doesn't cover living in an assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they know that that even though they may not, quote unquote, need to be in this place that has all of these, you know, the high skilled nursing functions to it, right? That for many of them, there is no option. If they have, ironically, if they have stayed healthy enough to be in the community or to be in an assisted living, those are the folks that can run out of money because assisted livings tend to be very expensive. So trying to provide this as the home for life is just an amazing thing. It is, and one That's of the an ways we do thing. that is getting back to the Shabazim, mm -hmm. who has multiple tasks that they are carrying out throughout the day, tasks that, um, such as um, tidying up, throwing a laundry in, doing the cooking. Right. So all of these extra staff people don't have to be paid. Right, right. And, and it, it saves and a lot. And it's funny because it, 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 to some extent, it really is or sounds like a reversion to when many of those elders were actually in their own home or in their own home. They were in their daughter's home or their son's home. It was part of a nuclear family. There were all kinds of people running in and out. And then in the corner was Meme. Mm -hmm. That was my, I remember my grandmother, mm -hmm. who my sisters later told me had Alzheimer's, right, mm -hmm. sitting in the rocking chair, and my aunt was there, and there were other people around, and there was all kinds of people, right? So she was still living to the best that she, to, to, where, to where her capacities were, really this wonderful, enriching life, and surrounded by people. And it's sounding very much like that's what this is, what this is going. Yes. Which is a wonderful thing. Which is a reversion back, you know, as you say, it used to be that we cared for our elders to the ends to of the their, end. to the end. And then suddenly, you know, the, the nuclear family took off and, and uh, two parties in the household were working multiple jobs and suddenly there was really no time for that elder. Right. And the elders were right. shifted, and this may have started in the f late 40s, 50s, were shifted to nursing homes. Yeah. Um, and now I think we're going to see a shift back to a different model, but a very home-like model. Yeah, and, to, and, and when you describe this, the reason why I wanted you to really get into this in detail is, as I say to myself once again, from kind of getting, having had, had a sense of the island from having come here now mm -hmm. for like eight years. I know I'm still new, you know, but only like eight years. 
you know, my sense is there are a lot of people here, as well as people who come here, who, ev who, who even if the model that you're describing, right, did not make money or could not break even, right, would be willing to participate in saying, we all have a role in subsidizing that model. We should all have an interest in making sure that there are such places, right? And, and we need to be doing that together, mm -hmm. you know, whether that is through a nonprofit or whatever. But I think the island has a real, there was some history to that. I remember Peter Temple saying that, you know, he's done a lot of with, 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 with uh, the Martha's Vineyard Donors Collaborative. I know I, my friend Inez Janger, mm -hmm. um, whom we were speaking about earlier, who was in, active in the collaborative, has also been active in this group, you know. And I think this, this notion that this is a, a crucial piece of the future of Martha's Vineyard, the availability of these homes, these non-institutional homes, is, is, I just think it's great that you're doing this. Thank you it, so much, It's Mark. just wonderful that you're doing this. So thank you very much for describing all of this, for describing what you do at the Council on Aging. Folks at Egertown are very lucky to have you thank there. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you have found this informative. This is going to lead, I think, to a lot of further discussion on the island regarding these issues. Um, I know that in addition to Victoria being active doing this, she's actually the convener uh, of one of the subcommittees, and so I'm, I may be inviting her back to be talking about the Healthy Aging Task Force more, together with the conveners, hopefully, of the other subcommittees, so that you can understand how much is being done to really kind of develop the, 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 the island for, for seniors like you of the future. So thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time in the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. And thank you very much, Victoria Hazelbar. Thank you, Art. It's been good to be here.